Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 21 of A Letter to the King. For those of you new to the series, A Letter to the King is my attempt to give you an update on the PvP that's going on on the Euro PvP 1 server. So straight away, let's have a look at where we were at the end of last week. So last week we were teetering on the brink of an a treaty arrangement between the Spanish, the British and the Dutch. Uh, an arrangement that would see much of the northern part of the Yucatan handed back to the Spanish, um, with the Dutch and the British holding a set of buffer zones to protect Jamaica, while the Spanish were buffered from attacks by the British. Uh, an important point to note was that the Americans are not signatories to this treaty. Um, it's very much between the British, the Spanish and the Dutch, and was put in place really um, to protect what was becoming a player base under pressure um, as the war was grinding uh, into the home territories. Um, at the same time, uh, Alliance and Détente uh, is still in place with the Antilles Treaty. Um, a couple of British ports that were taken by uh, a rogue Dutch clan uh, were in Dutch hands. Uh, the pirates were under enormous pressure with just a few ports left for them um, off the south tip of continental the United States. And uh, even the Bahamas, the secret islands and uh, most of the islands uh, off Florida and the Keys uh, had all been taken by the Americans, so the pirates were hugely on the back foot. Let's see what went down in an interesting week because it's the last week before the Alliances patch comes in. The Alliances patch is due to land in two days after the recording of this letter. So let's see what happens there. So, firstly, the Danes kind of woke up from their holiday slumber and in doing so, um, they gave the British, uh, I think Azure was the town that the Brits held. And it took a took couple of goes to get it. The first time, they, they literally missed getting it by just a couple of minutes. And the next time, uh, the Danes came in, very coordinated attack. And they pushed the Brits out. And they've recovered now um, all of the sort of um, south uh, east coast uh, of Haiti. So uh, after winning their ports and, and generally during the week the Danes have uh, been visiting British waters as they do um, and doing a little bit of capital ganking. Uh, the French, uh, they don't mind coming over and doing similarly and equally the pirates don't mind it as well. So there's, there's lots of PvP home delivered for the Denzians of Jamaica and uh, much appreciated chaps uh, for bringing the PVP to the door home delivery style. Um, meanwhile, the various other nations, um, they're quite happy to bring a little bit of PVP um, to the other capitals. The Brits and the Americans like to play in La Habana. Everybody likes to play around Mortimer Town. And um, the Brits have, uh, and I think the French are really pleased to see the Brits here of an evening. Uh, so pleased, in fact, the, there was reports of a couple of Brit Santis, or first rates, hiding in a battle screen, and the French camping it for hours, hours. And their long camping was paid off because when the Brits came out, uh, from what I've been told, the uh, French managed to snag themselves a couple of first rates. So the French... Uh, once stirred, um, tend to respond very aggressively to any incursions into their waters. Meanwhile, the pirates, their last stand uh, around the, the Gulf of Mexico, was rather uneventfully snuffed out uh, as the Americans and the Brits pushed in and uh, obliterated all of the pirate ports. It has to be said, very little resistance, a few lone players uh, fighting um to stop one of the two of the early flags but after that uh they pretty much chucked in the towel and i think the pirate nation are now just waiting for the new alliances to be formed and see what role they'll be playing 
uh, and probably more importantly waiting for some better content to arrive for pirates proper and let's hope the devs look after them uh, there's a lot of people went pirate uh, at various stages and um, now they're kind of stuck uh, with what is a nation by game mechanics but not a nation in the eyes of anybody who plays a pirate so they're neither here nor there at the moment our poor pirates friends at one stage the pirates were down to four ports during the week which is you know not many ports really um however there was a little bit of scurrilousness so I often get accused of bias when I do these reports. I don't try to be biased. Obviously, I play the game as a Brit, and when I play the game as a Brit, I try to kill my enemies, uh, and I'm totally biased. But when I do the reports, I do try and report what's gone on. Of course, I don't always know the full story, um, or I interpret it wrong, or inside people's heads, the reason they did things, I didn't know them, and so apparently that's bias when my telepathetic powers um, aren't at their best however the reports I've got on this one is that a um, large pirate force negotiated secretly with some Dutch ambassadors I'm sorry some Danish ambassadors um, in order to take a port nearer to the Swedish territories the goal was for the pirates to then leapfrog into the Swedish territories be they in the Antilles and disrupt the uh, alliance down here or leapfrog uh, and, and be able to hit the Swedes on two fronts from Mortimer Town across the north of Haiti. Now whoever they spoke to uh, and even if they, if they did even speak to anybody they weren't representative of the Danish council. The Danish council were not at all impressed with this move uh, indeed they they defended the port uh, the pirates had already capped a few ports back on the north uh, of Cuba and so the pirates came in and they captured Macau on the tip here and oh my lordy get your popcorn out jump on the forums and have a look at the uh, the pea and vinegar that was going around as to this arrangement the Danes were most unimpressed by this whole thing and the Danes actually declared war on the pirates, which, of course, you know, is... Or well, not actually on the pirates, correction. Rewind. And the Danes actually declared war on the one clan that initiated this action and anybody who sailed and affiliated themselves with that clan. Pretty hard to tell in a pirate nation, of course, as to who's a baddie baddie and who's a goodie baddie. But anyway... Um, and the rest of the, the nations who were in various levels of accord with each other um, all agreed to help the Danes and uh, one punter joked that it's, it's taken a couple of hundred years to get the Danes and the Swedes to agree on everything but um, in this particular case this incursion has managed it uh, and so every man and his dog turned up um, to screen for the Danes um, and the best part of 150 160 ships were in the area some hilarious pictures on the forums go and check them out a real tinderbox a real Mexican standoff with all of these huge clumps of ships from different nations all circling this one port and unfortunately the pirates never showed up to defend it not that they could have given the fact they'd have been attacked by 350 um, Care Bear, Dolphin, Cuddle, Kitten, Alliance, uh, Nations, all in a great big circle of love. And so the pirates were easily vanquished at the hands of the Danes. And that really probably was the biggest excitement of the week. Um, other than that, it's been little biffos here and there. And actually, oh, I should just go back because I just do need to bring out one thing. There's been a bit of port swapping with the Americans and the Spanish. Um, and it's an interesting one because the Brits are screening defensively for the Americans when the Spanish come at them. And there has also been talk of uh, members of the British, Dutch, Swedish, American alliance screening for the Americans when they're attacking. And in fact, the Americans grabbed up two ports. This was just before I uh, took my screenshot. So I don't know the story behind these, but they took up two ports. 
I mean, this is only a hop, skip and a jump from the Spanish capital. And this is in the area that the British-Dutch-Spanish Treaty, uh, this is Cuyo, um, basically says belongs to the Spanish. So the Spanish are feeling very aggrieved about this. Basically, they thought they had this buffer zone. The Americans, of course, were never uh, parties to this treaty. And they are choosing to continue prosecuting the BIF with the Spanish. And they're getting support from their alliance members. So in the eyes of the Spanish, this is all a bit, what the fuck uh, is all this about then? Oh, the whole purpose of the treaty was to protect the remaining elements of the motherland and their ancestral waters as they see it. So this potentially could upset the apple cart. However, it probably won't because in two days we get the new alliances patch where somehow, and I don't know how it will work, we all get to vote, and we vote for one ally and one enemy, and then the following week we back that up with another vote <coughs> for an ally and an enemy. So let's just see how that one comes out. In theory, it should mean that at any given point in time, there's three or four primary alliances uh, in the game. Three is the golden number if you check out your Chinese history and the dynasty wars and the likes. Three is the magic number of enemies you need to perpetuate combat. <coughs> um, so let's see what happens there. Let's just have a keep an eye on this. This this is this is kind of uh, interesting. Both of these nations have probably got equalish forces. I think the Spanish might have slightly more forces at their peak times. Um, but their peak times don't match. They're sort of shifted by about six or eight hours from each other. So it's a bit of a strange war, really. It tends to mean that the side defending um, are undermanned. I know the Spanish, when they retook a couple of the islands around here, they were up at like crazy bonkers o'clock in the morning to do that. Uh, I don't know what time the Americans knocked these two over. <coughs> but that will be interesting to see what happens there. Now, if you look at the map and we forget about those two fracas, um, this is basically the elements of the map that are currently locked up in alliances. So it's a little bit ironic that the alliances patch is about to come up when more of the map than there's ever been is actually tied up in alliance agreements. So there's, there's Haiti, um, Pirate Town, and a little bit of Cuba that's up for grabs. And pretty much the rest of the map is... Um, well, it's basically the bits between America, the Pirates, and the Spanish um, that is the unsettled parts of the map. Although this area here is open for combat, there's very little that goes on. Uh, the Danes, perhaps, are awaking. Um, but, but, of course, all this goes out the window in two days when the Alliances patch comes in and the uh, Antilles Treaty is invalidated and the Three Admirals Treaty is in invalidated. And who will go with who as far as allies are concerned? Who will court who? Where will the enemies be focused upon? Could be very interesting. Let's see how that one crumbles. There's also a couple of secret things in the patch that they're not telling us about. It's very hard to predict what they'll be. I'm going to go out on a limb, crazy that I am. And I think one of the secret things that they're going to do is they were planning on running a tournament which they've postponed. And I suspect they might be putting some mechanics in the game to support that tournament. There is a secret, second secret thing, and I've got no idea what that is. Maybe it's crafting cannons. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? If only I'd taken my mate's advice and bought up all that Swiss iron. Anyways... So, where will the Biffo be? Well, let's pretend the alliances don't happen. It might be across the bottom of Haiti, the stretch north of Cuba, and Pirate Town, of course, and with the Americans and the Spanish, and I would have highlighted this had I uh, got to it quickly enough uh, before server downtime. Um, there will be the normal ganking areas for the gank fleets, but to be honest, we don't know. We don't know. In come the alliances, who knows? It might be... The Brits and the Dutch versus the French. It might be the Danes and the French versus the Swedes. It might be the Americans and the Brits versus the Spanish. The Spanish and the Danes versus the Swedes. Who knows? And will the pirates get a vote? I mean, technically, I know they're not meant to be a nation, but they are at the moment. Will the pirates get a vote? 
Um, how will the pirates play in the absence of them having the right mechanics? So we will have to see. But it's very exciting, very interesting. I, I love the way the game is slowly growing patch by patch. Um, perks are more or less in now. They're tweaking them around. Um, that's been a big change. The ship deacceleration has been a big change. And now we're about to get alliances and two secret things. So that's good. Let's see how that one uh, ends up. Let's check the tally of Splinter's Sail and Blood. And pretty much this we can consider this at the end of the sort of pre-alliance era. Ironically, when there's more alliances than there has ever been. So the Brits lost seven ports, and that's predominantly to do with the treaty they made with the Spanish. Um, the Americans made hay, um, grabbing up a bunch of ports, many of them uh, from the pirates off the continental south of the USA. Um, the Dutch lost a few ports, so some of that was the pirates biting back in north of Cuba. Um, oh, and the three ports that they're... Um, renegade Dutch clan had taken in the uh, South Panama uh, had been recovered by the Brits. I forgot to mention that. The Spanish, well, the treaty has given them a boon of 11 ports. Uh, that would be slightly higher if the Americans hadn't have been a bit sneaky. Um, the French, very quiet week for the French. Other than ganking in French town, very, very quiet week for the French. Uh, the Danes, they picked up a port, kicking the Brits out of Azure. Um, the Swedes uh, held their lines and the Pirates took a jolly good spanking and they're down to eight ports now. So that's about it for episode 21. It's a bit of a watermark in the naval action uh, PvP story. So if all goes to plan in 48 hours from the release of this, the alliances patch will come out. I don't know how long we'll have to vote. Uh, you'd imagine it'd have to be at least a few days, maybe until the weekend or something, um, before the the first alliances form. And with all treaties off, who knows where we'll be? I was part of me was hoping for a port wipe. But given the fact they've not given us a heads up that that's happening, and they said they always would give us a heads up, so you know you could decamp all of your ports, maybe move them into free towns, or if they pre-publish the new map, you could move them into uh, safe ports that are currently held by your nation. Uh, but we've got no information on that at all, so I'm going to assume there's no port wipe, uh, which is a pity. I think that would be good. Maybe they'll do that when they do the new port battles and the regional antagonism um so yeah just a reminder jump onto the forums chaps and get yourself into the developer forums um and and have a look at, at what the devs are talking about there when it comes to alliances and newport battle mechanics and the likes Ch uh, chuck in your opinion um everyone should have an opinion opinions like ourselves we've all got one um and let's see how she goes so, oh, that's the bell to say it's time to sign off. So, um, give us a like, give us a subscribe. I'm very much looking forward to next week's patch. Um, let's hope it revitalizes the PvP. It's all gone a bit Care Bear recently. And I will see you on the oceans, and I will catch you.